So today, um, me and Emily want to talk to you about just sort of uh, the state right now of collaboration tools that are open source for designers to work together. Um, and actually, we, this is also where we're going to launch the first public release of a tool that we've been working on for the past few weeks. Um, so I'm actually right now going to switch to Emily's computer and she is going to start deploying it so you can watch it deploying live as I talk about it. So um, the, uh, the history here is that um, a bunch of the GNOME designers meet you know, once a year, maybe twice a year at various conferences and there was a UX hack fest for GNOME in um, London in uh, February uh, 2010. And we kind of got into this conversation where, hey, we meet every year and we talk about all this awesome stuff we're going to do together and then we don't talk about it again until we see each other next year. Um, and that kind of sucks, so what can we do to fix it? And one of the topics that came up is um, there's not a lot of really good collaboration tools for designers. Um, developers have tools like Git and they have tools that are tailored for, you know, producing code, but for designers it's a little bit more difficult. So um, we had sort of uh, came up with a few different, and is, how, how far along are you on with that? Um, oh. So I'm just going to interrupt for a second just to tell you what I just did. Um, we're launching it on OpenShift, which is a platform as a service, um, I don't know if you all are familiar with the concept. If not, just think of it as like hosting, but better. Um, and we've been writing uh, this application to specifically so it'll run on OpenShift, so it, um, it makes it very easy to host your own version of it if you want to. Um, so what I just did is um, I went to my OpenShift account and created a Ruby application because this is uh, Rails-based. Um, and this, what you're looking at right now is just the default. Um, how to do that. Thank you. Um, this is just the default um, application template that comes with uh, every OpenShift application by default. Um, to get our application running, I just have to do a few get pulls. And so I'm going to do that right now. But that's very boring to watch, so I'm going to switch back to Mo. <laughs> and then let me switch over to... Uh, Right, okay. So um, we'll start from the very beginning, right? So we had this discussion at the UX Hack Fest. Um, this is one of the whiteboards that we had when we were discussing, you know, wouldn't it be cool if we had something like Dropbox, but it was open source, maybe if it was Git backed. Um, and this was sort of the two challenges that we talked about is, well, designers need to interact with each other and be able to share files and collaborate and not, you know, not have to be constantly doing file uploads and transfers. I mean, the way that I have been doing it traditionally on my team is using MediaWiki and uploading mockups manually to MediaWiki one by one by one, and this is just not a great workflow. Um, so um, actually, Hilka, who's probably in here somewhere, I don't see him, um, wrote Sparkle Share. There you are. <laughs> he wrote Sparkle Share, which is basically um, sort of a front end to Git. So it uses iNotify to watch when files change in a directory. So, I mean, what this means for us as designers is I can be working on a mock-up in Inkscape, and as long as that mock-up is based out of a Sparkle Share project directory, as soon as I go to file save, it git commits, and everybody I'm working with on that project gets a notification, hey, Mo just updated that mock-up. And it's kind of a neat invitation to collaborate because I see, oh, oh, look, Mo's working on that, or Emily's working on that. Oh, that sounds interesting. I'll go click on it see what she did and take a look and give her feedback. So it's almost like an invitation to participate, whereas previously, you know, you just kind of had to know that someone was working on something and when you talk to them about it, maybe they're doing something else and they're too busy to talk about it. So now here's this nice invitation. When they're in the mindset, I'm working on this mock-up, you can kind of contact them and talk it through. Um, so, and how many people in here are familiar with Sparkle Share? Okay, so that's actually a lot fewer than I thought. I know it came up in the lightning talks last year at LGM, but I'll just show you sort of a quick little, like what it looks like on my machine. Um, oh boy, I have a lot of crap open. Okay. So, um, oh, it's not running right now. So basically it's just this app here. And I'm, I'm running um, GNOME Shell, so 
I'm not exactly sure how it looks in KDE, but basically you'll have this little item in the messaging tray, and these are all the projects that I'm connected to. So I can see like recent changes, like what have people been working on? I can see Jim Mack has been working on cheat sheets. That's kind of cool. If I'm interested, I can start talking to him, have a conversation, um, take a look at what it looks like right there. So that's that's really cool. And that's, that's a feature I think that was um, somewhat borrowed from Dropbox. And then I can go in, um, like these are projects that I work on all the time, and I can go into my mockups. I can go into Inkscape and open up, and then as soon as I save it, it commits to Git. And it's cool too because when I'm working with developers, um, you know, they don't need to use Sparkle Share. They can just use Git, which they're comfortable with, and pull my mockups and follow my progress that way. So designers can follow the project's progress in a way that's comfortable to them, and the developers can follow it in a way that's comfortable to them. So it's a great system. It's all open source. It's all version controlled. It's awesome. So moving on. This is the other challenge that we talked about, and this is for designers to talk to developers. And while Sparkle Share handles that a little bit if the developers are tracking your Git repo, um, what about designers talking to the general community? You know, I have all these mockups, and they're in a folder, and people I'm working with closely on the project know where they are and know where to look. But if I'm just a community member, um, you know, maybe I use the software, but I'm not so intimately involved with its day to day that I know where this stuff is. You know, how do we make it so it's easy for people interested in just taking a look? You know, what's going on? What's the latest? You know, can I leave some feedback? Um, right now, like for me as a designer, I do a lot of blog posts and I'll post my mock ups and then I'll get comments in, in the blog post about feedback. I'll get emails, I'll get stuff through Twitter and Identica, and it's all over the place. And it's a bit of a mess because there's no real one canonical place to store that kind of information. So this is one issue. And um, what Emily has been working on deploying is hopefully maybe going to solve that a little bit. But I can tell you a little bit about some false attempts that we had to solve that problem. Um, one of the ideas that we had was something called Design Hub. And it's kind of like GitHub, but Design Hub. But, um, and um, I had done a bunch of mock-ups of just really rough ideas, like maybe this is something what a web interface could look like, and maybe it could be backed by Git or it could be backed by Sparkle Share. And this is sort of the web interface where we can ask for feedback and have moderation and discussion and stuff like that. And there was actually um, a company called Isotope 11 based out of Chicago, and they're sort of a big Ruby on Rails sh um, shop. And they actually used the mockups to train one of their new developers in learning Ruby on Rails. But he got so far, and then, well, he learned Ruby on Rails, and he moved on to do things that made the company money. So it kind of got a little abandoned. Um, it did actually, oh, I went too far. It inspired Media Goblin. I don't know how many of you are familiar with Media Goblin, but on Tuesday, they actually just released a new version. Um, and while um, Media Goblin isn't exactly the solution that we're looking for here, um, the uh, Design Hub mockups actually did inspire it, which I found out last week when Chris Weber um, posted on Identica about that. So that's kind of cool. Even you know, putting an idea out there can make cool things happen. But um, yeah, that there was just a lot of false starts in getting that to happen. So this this whole talk and um, what me and Emily put together is sort of our attempt at maybe coming back to solving that problem. So um, then we had, uh, there's been a third challenge that kind of came up for having, um, you know, design collaboration tools. And it's actually more for having interactive mockups. If I'm trying to talk someone through the way that I feel the design should be, um, it's a little bit hard to get a feel for it if they're flat mockups. Like I can see it in my head animated because I know what it's going to look like, but trying to explain that to another person with just flat images is hard. And, you know, well, wouldn't it be nice if I could just have simple click through dumb mockups. Okay. Well, I know a lot of designers that aren't necessarily open source proponents will use Flash to do that, but Flash kind of seems like a dying technology. There's no, you know, tool that will produce Flash that runs on Linux and it's a dying it's technology, Linux, right? It's, it's losing support on Linux except through Chromium. So, okay, that's kind of a dead end. Um, both me and Emily have tried to do HTML mockups where we're just handwriting HTML and the danger there is, number one, doing interactive mockups in HTML, it's a lot of work. Um, it's a lot of work that's not directly related to designing user experience, you're hand coding stuff. The other thing is that there's like this 
sad state of affairs where you're coming up with this thing that's meant to be a mock-up and it somehow ends up being production code, especially if you work on web apps and we really don't want that going on. So um, the third option that I started investigating was there are actually a lot of websites like Creately is one of them, mocksup.com is another one where they actually let you upload your mock-up files and then um, drag out little layers and things and, and make it so that you can click on different areas and then navigate to a different file. And yeah, a lot of them use Flash. And they're also, it's how are they storing that data, right? Like, it's not open source. I couldn't deploy it on my own. So if I have some company internal stuff, I'm trusting a third-party service. And whether or not you trust a third-party service, that's a personal decision. For me, I wasn't OK with that. So I did a blog post about, um, I wrote this little script in JavaScript because I was actually really inspired by Sozi. And maybe a lot of you are familiar with Sozi. It's a tool that it basically is an Inkscape extension that injects some JavaScript into your Inkscape SVG files. And you can use layers in Inkscape as presentation slides. And then when you open the SVG up in Firefox, you can click through and it's just like a normal slideshow. So, well, hey, if Sozi could do that, why couldn't it? we can do something for clicking through mockups. So I wrote this terrible JavaScript, because I am really suck at JavaScript. And I wrote a blog post kind of talking about, hey, look, you could actually do this. And actually, the guy from Moxup wrote me this comment. I marked it as private, because he seemed maybe vaguely upset, because he didn't want us to put him out of business. So OK. And just last week, I got this email. <laughs> so. Um, I'm kind of glad that I didn't take him up on his offer. He said, well, if it's an open source project, I'll give you a free account. But what would happen now? Like right now, today, I'd have four weeks to get my mockups out of it. And then what would happen to all the metadata and click throughs and everything I spent hours setting up? So I'm kind of glad we didn't go that route. Um, so what we ended up doing was something called Magic Mockup. Um, Garrett actually took the initiative of cleaning up my really ugly, terrible JavaScript, and he rewrote it in CoffeeScript and did a lot of fixes. I was doing crazy things, like for every screen, I had the JavaScript, the whole JavaScript in the SVG. So he got it like externally linked and cleaned things up and whatever. And Emily has been working on it too, adding features. So um, the GitHub repo for it is there. And we also need a logo. So if anybody wants to design a logo, <laughs> Nice offer. Um, and um, I can give you a quick demo of that. Um, the main project, actually, I've been using it for is the Fedora installer redesign. So I should have it open. Oh, is it this browser? No. Um, here. So this is just, you can see in the header here, it's just the SVG that's opened up. It's not in HTML or anything. And there's different areas on the screen that I can click through them. You can go to wireless, IPv6, and it, it just you know it, it just gives you sort of a rough feel of you know what it's like to click through the UI. So um, in any case, th this is sort of a, a neat way that I could even do a screencast. Like if I'm trying to explain to developers, okay, well the user is in this situation, how are they going to use this? I can record a screencast clicking through this little mockup that I did with Magic Mockup play the screencast for them and then they understand. This is especially useful if, you know, I'm in Boston and the developers are in another country and we're time lagged. I could just send them the screencast. It's great. Um, oops. So. so yes, so how is your deployment going? It's getting there. It's getting there. Okay, so we're still deploying. So you'll, you'll get to check it out soon. But yeah, so we still have this open question of, well, how are we going to organize all this stuff? How are we going to share with the wider community, gather all the feedback that we have in one place, and have a little bit more organization than, oh, yeah, you know where that repo is over there. Or you have to know the right person to know what's going on. Have something that's maybe a little bit more inviting for people to kind of drop by and see what's going on. Um, so we're calling it Glitter Gallery, since we have sort of this magical theme with Sparkle Share and Magic Mockup. So it's Glitter Gallery. Um, and that's our, our GitHub repo. That's what Emily's pulling from right now, which is taking so long, um, I think, right? Well, it wasn't the pull that's taking so long. It's all the uh, building on the server. Oh, okay. right. so, so that's building right now. But I actually have a um, running local copy. So I can take you through that. And this is very much like prototype, just to give you a feel. This is not production quality, but 
we're hoping maybe it'll get people excited. So um, the idea here is you can log in and create, we have this concept of projects, and a project may have many mockups. So here, like, I have the Anaconda project, and I have all my mockups in one SVG file. Um, the way Magic Mockup works is each layer is a different screen, and each screen, actually, I probably should have shown that to you earlier. <laughs> um, so each screen has a layer, and they have, the name of the layer is the name of the screen. So for example, on this screen, if I click on software selection, um, let's see, is this window not opening? I need the object properties. There it is. No, why did you disappear? I think the layer is locked. This one. There it is. So here, there's like this little directive here. Next is screen dash software. So if I click on this object, when the SVG is in the browser, then it'll navigate to the screen software, which is in my layers palette. Drag this down here. So then this one will load. So you, you basically rig up all the little buttons and areas of the interface to, to go together. So um, that's how this is the same exact file right here. So if I click on it in Magic Mockup or in Clear Gallery, then um, it'll start loading. It's a very big SVG file, so it'll take a while. But And then I can click through right here. Um, and I can go through the mockup. And then there's a comments form on the bottom. And what, what our eventual idea is, is for each screen, there'll be a different comment thread. Um, so, you know, if you have notes about the screen, like maybe I'll be talking this through with a developer and he'll say, oh, well, I can't implement it this way because of yada yada. Then you can just take a note, hey, he said we can't do it because of this. Because I, I don't know if you ever come into this situation with designs, but, you know, it makes perfect sense. We made this change because there's this technology limitation or this issue or whatever. And then six months down the line, why did we do that? <laughs> I don't know. I don't remember. So being able to keep sort of a nice log per screen and talk about your changes. Um, so that's that. Is it done? All right. Where is it at? What's, what's the URL? Okay, so it's glitter. So you can check this out right now if you have your laptop open and you're falling asleep because I'm boring. Um, so it's glitter-panda.rhcloud.com. And you can sign up. It's You just type in a, it can even be a fake email address and a password. Yeah, is it a slow connection? Okay, we'll just let that load. So, you can also add different, um, oh, it is, okay. There we go, so, have fun, yay, we just deployed, woo! Champagne! <laughs> <laughs> but then, for each, each project, you can also have, um, this is sort of a rough prototype. Um, so it doesn't actually save to the database. But um, Emily actually wrote this little app that lets you drag out areas in the mockup and add context, um, contextual comments. So you can do add note and, right, it's just like the Flickr style little notes. So I can drag it over. And then later on I can see, oh, there's a comment there. Yay! So. This could also be nice because, you know, you ever have a thing where you make a blog post or something and you're talking about a mock-up and someone's like, oh, I can't stand blah. Well, what do you mean? Like, where on the screen? So this is very contextual. The person can drag out what they're talking about and make a comment. So that's another thing. And then um, you can have multiple mock-ups per project. Um, one So, yeah, um, so we have a, um, where did my, yeah, these are our big dreams. I, I, I'm kind of a little frightened to call it a roadmap because that means we, we will definitely do it. It's not a promise, okay? <laughs> but if you help us, maybe it will happen. Um, uh, Hilka was actually telling us about there's a sparkle share invite button thing, and that URL there is to a YouTube 
screencasts he did showing off the feature. Um, we thought that would be awesome to integrate into this. So say you're bro browsing some project on um, you know, my Glitter Gallery. Oh, well, that's a cool project. I want to participate. You could click on the button, add to Sparkle Share, and then suddenly Sparkle Share will pop up, and you'll start getting the, the project files, and you'll have a Git check out of the project, and you can start contributing. Um, Flickr style notes, but persistent. That would be good that they don't <laughs> disappear once you change the page. Um, right now, we're doing one repo per user, and this is really messy because if you have a lot of files and you're working with someone who's just involved in one project, they have to download all your files. So we're going to change the model so that it's one repo per project, and we're actually really looking at a GitHub style thing for designers where I can just start a project, start some mock-ups, another designer can come and fork my stuff and then have a pull request and that kind of model. Um, I don't know if that's the best model. It seems it's, kind of nice. Yeah. If you have thoughts on it, we'd love to hear them. Um, it seems less messy than like trying to get everybody in your account and managing groups exactly. and stuff so like that. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, so uh, one repo per project because you know, that's what we're going to need to do for like the forking pull request model anyway. Um, we're talking about how, like this is very pie in the sky, but we'd, we'd really like to be able to um, create interactive mockups in, in the browser, like have a, a browser-based interface to make a static mockup, an interactive mockup. Um, let's see, um, yeah. This is already using Git um, as the file backend, um, so we'd like to pull in more like Git features and have real versioning and history and diffs and all of that good stuff that um, developers take for granted and designers have to struggle with. Um, Something like style, you can see how the mockup changed over time, kind of thing, or like archive.org when you're looking at an old website. That might be really cool, and Git would make it possible. So. Um, yeah, uh, since we're using Git, it'd be nice if you could take an existing Git repo and add it to the site. That's not possible right now because this is very, very rough. But um, that's that's definitely a big goal that that we have. Um, let's see. Yeah, we're using SVG object embedding to get the um, interactive. SVGs to actually work um, properly, and that has some limitations. So we need somebody clever to come up with a good solution for that. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, we'd like to really have um, aggregated feedback. Like this could this would be great to have a central place where people who talk about it on Twitter or on Identica um, who. Like Bo posts to her blog all the time. If she can get like comments from her blog to be aggregated in this one place, then your feedback isn't scattered everywhere. You've got a central place where you can go and see what everybody thinks about it. Um, let's see. Well, that's. I mean, we have lots of ideas, yeah, right? Yeah. So, there's lots but. of ideas there. It's just like that was too many. But if you have any questions or suggestions, yeah. have at it. <laughs> oh, yes. So I would like to suggest there is a free open source project called SVG Edit that already does it so you can incorporate it and it is uh, on MIT license. So you mentioned something about HTML SVG embedding issues. What issues? What's the problem? What? So the issue that we're running into is um, if you embed the SVG, it's always like full size. So if it's like 1024 by 768, if I do, you know, say I wanted to do a full screen thing or I wanted to size it down and thumbnail it, it crops the image rather than resizing it. That's because Inkscape, like most applications that started off as print things and then became web things, the very first thing it asks you when you want to make something is how big is your paper? And then it puts those in the width and height attributes. So 
SVG, S is scalable, and almost all applications make fixed size things with a width and height. And all you need is a little script that will take the width number and the height number and put them in a, ba in a view box attribute. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, but you, you don't need to... You, have, you can't just remove the width and height. You have to you have to say what coordinate space you're using. So you put it into a view box, and that makes it scalable. So there is a there is a script called Scour, which will do that for you, along with cleaning up a whole lot of other stuff. Well, you might not want to do that, but anyway, it, it's very easy to to fix that. There might be a Inkscape, a decent Inkscape RFE for Inkscape to output it nicely in the first place. Any other? <laughs> well, now there's a reason for people to fix it. <laughs> Any other questions, suggestions? Logo designs for Magic Mockup? <laughs> yeah, that'd be cool. <laughs> okay, well, oh. So I notice you use Inkscape a lot in that workflow, which which is obviously a good choice because it's a great editor, but it's not the only editor. And is it relying on specific Inkscape features? If someone else contributes an SVG that they made either by hand or through a script or in some other application, is that going to be a problem? Does it have, does it rely on Inkscape layering features and things like that? So um, the Inkscape, does, does Magic Mockup look specifically for the layer tag in the group? Is there some SVG entity that we could use to, because layers doesn't exactly work either, because, you know, you're defining a screen, it's not really a layer, but I wouldn't know what would be the semantically correct way to... Yeah. Essentially what you've got is a set of groups, right? And then you're putting some metadata on there to say this is what this particular group means. And in this case it means it's a screen. Um, It, it would be nice if people could collaborate that didn't have to, you didn't sort of shoehorn them into all using the one tool. You know, that's what I'm saying. Beyond the layers thing, there's nothing in it that's Inkscape dependent. We're just putting it in the description field for the object and then we're putting a reference to the JavaScript. Would it help if SVG2 added a layer group thing that was just a group with special? Would that really help? General question to the audience, would it help if SVG2 had explicit layers? Yes. Okay, I'll look into it. All right. Oh, another question. Um, I just wonder if you already tried to team up with a big mm, established art communities like Debian Art or something like that, maybe they were interested in your tool and might support it. Did you try such a thing already? We haven't. Um, and I don't know, I I follow some people on DeviantArt, but they're, they're visual artists and not necessarily doing UX. So I don't know how big a community of UX designers is on DeviantArt. But I mean, it's totally worth it. I mean, even if you're doing, you know, some sort of visual art, being able to click different areas and defining, having it some kind of interactivity might be useful. Um, do you have any contacts to the Divina? No, no, no. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely a really good idea. A dribble, yeah. No other questions? Cool.
Well, thanks. Thanks for uh, coming to our talk. <laughs>